If you have a K40 CO2 laser and it's just been sitting in a box for a while because you're not exactly sure how to use it, how to connect it to light burn, how to do your first test, how to even figure out how to use what material that you've bought for it, then this video is gonna be perfect for you. We're gonna start with the simple stuff. We're gonna go ahead and make the connection to light burn. I'm gonna show you in light burn how to set it up from scratch. I'm gonna have other lasers already configured in there. That won't apply to you, um, but the, con the configuration of the K40 will apply exactly to you. And once you have that connection, I'm gonna show you how to test and make sure that all your motors are working how they should, uh, how your framing button is working how it should, and also just kind of a few features in light burn, like the absolute positions or current positions. Um, I use both of those interchangeably depending on what job I'm doing. So this will help you kind of get going. Now, whenever you do see the inside of my laser, it's not gonna look exactly like yours. I've already done several upgrades and modifications to mine. I've had mine for a few months. That way I could really learn to use it and give you the best help possible. So that's why the inside of mine is gonna look a little different. I have air assist and I've got a adjustable height Z table. Those are upgrades you can do. There's links in the description below for if you want to do stuff like that. And I will have videos on kind of all the mods that I've done to my K40 in a later video. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and dive in, focus on getting that initial test and that initial connection to light burn, figuring out how to use your laser. And also, I'm just gonna grab a piece of, I think I've got 16th inch wood up there. Uh, your laser can handle much more than that, but I've just got some scrap that we can use. I'm gonna show you how to do a test grid so you can find out where your laser fires, where it doesn't. As a CO2 laser user, uh, you might not know this yet, but your CO2 laser will not go down to 0% power or 1% power. Uh, chances are it's not gonna function below about 10 to 15%, maybe 20% depending on your tube. So that's something to keep in mind. Doing a laser test like we're going to do towards the end of this video, there'll be chapters below if you wanna just jump right to that will help you figure out where your laser performs best on what material. I highly recommend doing that laser test on every material and keeping that material card handy. If you don't have that material card, you can always rerun the test. You can save presets, so that way you can kind of work from the same place. And it's really easy to do. None of this is hard. All of this should only take you a few minutes. It'll take me a little bit longer having to explain it, but really this should only take you a couple minutes to get up and going. So with all that said, my name is Patrick. This is Created Workshop, and it's time to dive into this video. I apologize for any background noise you might hear. I've got the chiller running and also just a fan. It's uh, just over 80 degrees here um, in the shop. But just to kind of give you a quick overview of this, ignore this temperature, this is not accurate. Um, in case you are unfamiliar, you've got your emergency stop. So if something's going wrong, you just press it. Uh, the machine will not work whatsoever when that's pressed. Twist, it comes up, you're good to go. You've got your ammeter, which we'll go ahead and turn on the machine. You can see the ammeter here. And I just keep mine turned all the way up. Um, with the Lightburn control board, I control all of my power from within Lightburn. So I leave this at max power and I control everything from within light burn. You've obviously got your power switch here. Um, and like I said, ignore, ignore this temperature. If you can see it, I'm not sure if you can. It's reading 22 C, but I know that my water temperature is 18 uh, because I'm running a CW5200 chiller where I can choose what temperature I run. Um, it's a refrigerated chiller. And so I know that I am at the correct temperature there. Now, we're gonna turn the camera a little bit and kind of look inside. As you can see, there's not a whole lot going on. It's powered on, but it's not moving. So I'm gonna jump over to the computer. We're gonna get that on and then from there, go ahead and start working on all of the stuff that we're gonna need to do for light burn to work with our laser. Okay, so now that we're looking at light burn, we're gonna go ahead and get it all set up. And to start with, you're gonna to go to devices and then find my laser. We're gonna hit next, it's gonna scan and it might or might not find the laser. You can see here that it did. So it's on COM5 and that, that'll change depending on what computer you're using. You can see it's Gerbil um, and it's a 300 by 200. We hit add device. We're gonna change this to Monport K40 light burn. You can add whatever you want as the name there. 
and hit next. Make sure that it is 300 by 200. We're gonna auto home it to the rear left and then hit finish. And uh, that is a old one of this. We're gonna remove that and now hit okay. Now you can see on the camera, it's homing to that rear left. And so from there, we're going to just test some stuff. This is uh, not the correct size in here. And if yours looks this big, that could just be your settings. And um, actually, we're problem here is we're not looking at the right one. There we go. So this is just because I've got multiple lasers. I had to go down here and choose the Monport K40 with light burn. Um, it rehomed again, and that's that. If you only have one laser, you won't have to do that. As you see here, this looks like the size of our bed uh, for your K40. Now, if you go over to the move tab, um, 25.4, that's one inch, that's fine. 100 millimeters per second is also fine. And now we're going to hit the buttons. We're going to work on just moving. In light burn, you can see that I've got it showing me the show last position is selected. It's showing me where the laser is in the software. So now if I look in the laser, I can kind of line things up and go from there. If I want it to go home, we just hit go home. At this point, we have done our initial connection. See, that wasn't too hard. It really only takes a second. And now we're about ready to do some actual testing. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the laser shelf, grab some material and get things set. Uh, I'm not gonna show you focusing the laser and getting that dialed in just because you are gonna have to do something totally different than me as I have an auto Z bed and you most likely, unless you've installed an auto Z bed, don't have that. So I'm gonna go get that set up and be right back with you. Okay, so now that we've got everything kind of set up, uh, we're gonna go ahead and change. We were on absolute coordinates, but we're gonna change to current position. And uh, the reason we're gonna do that is we want the laser to move from wherever it's currently at. And so we're going to move it kind of to right here. We're gonna go to laser tools, we're gonna go to material test, and then we're gonna change this up a little bit. We're gonna go and do 100 to 300. We're gonna do five. You can do whatever you want. And then 10 to 100, and that's fine. We're going to make sure that the, um, let's see, this is the text setting. Text setting should be fill, and we should be filling that at a, about, I'm gonna guess around 150, that should be fine. And over here, this is filling. We also wanna do bi-directional scan. I'm gonna drop my line interval. I like a 0.08 line interval. I find that that engraves better. Um, you do what you want on that, up to you. We're gonna preview this. This is gonna take 10 minutes to do. We're gonna do one pass, as you can see here, tells us the interval, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, and then 10 all the way through 100%. Now, I'm actually gonna jump up from this 10 to 20%. I just know that my laser does not go down to 10%, so we're gonna start at 20% at 100. We're gonna work up to 300 at 100%. This will tell us what we can do on this material, and then also we can hit the frame button. I'm gonna walk over to the laser, and we're gonna hit frame, and this is just gonna show you what it's gonna do. From there, we're going to make sure that our venting is turned on, and then I'm gonna grab a magnet don't do this. I'm doing this because you guys are watching um, to override that. But we are now ready to go. And so at this point, all you do is hit start and I will turn on my air assist. If you don't have air assist, I highly recommend you get it. Um, my air assist is just kind of sitting on the side. It is a 3D printed air assist. If you would like the file, the link is down in the description. And if you need one printed, feel free to message me um, over on Instagram at created workshop and I can get that printed and shipped to you. So now it is time to get started on this. We're going to hit start and I'll be back with you guys here in a few.
And now if you take a look, we're going to, you can just move these out of the way by hand. Let's we'll take a closer look at this and see what we've got. Now, I can figure this out here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. You can see that obviously 100 speed and 100% power, really 60% power is a little much because uh, it goes all the way through. But when we come up to say 100 at 20%, that looks good. Uh, 150 at 30% looks pretty good. Up at 250 at 50% or even 300 at 50 or 50, 50 or 60% looks pretty good. Any of those would be passable and I would like it. Now, if you're wondering what my text here is, that text is engraved at 150 at, I believe, 50%. And it looks great. And so with this, you now know where to start for this material. This is pretty thin. But as you can see, we can very easily engrave a wide range of colors. And that is what doing a material test in Lightburn will do for you. Now you can do custom ones, you can make your own where it cuts out afterwards, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, but I, I like doing these because it lets me know where I need to be to use this specific material. It really is that easy to get your laser up and running. It, it doesn't take long. It sounds intimidating and I know that there are other steps like cooking up the water chiller and different things like that that we've covered in previous videos. But once you've got all that done, the software side of things is really the easiest of it all. Now that you're ready to go, be sure to like and subscribe. That way I know that you guys like this video and you're ready to go for the next video. Should come out next week and it'll walk you through step by step on how to create a product that you can begin selling today. Like I said earlier, I've already sold about a half dozen of them or a dozen of them. And so you can be well on your way to doing that for your friends and family. It's a simple design. It only takes a few minutes to set up. It only takes about a minute or so to engrave and cut on the laser and it's easy to do. I'm gonna be walking you through all of that next week, but for now, thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful, and if you have any other issues with your laser, uh, there will be a link in the, in the corner to a playlist where I go through things like mirror alignment and getting your lens all nice and good, as well as changing the tube if you ever need that. Thank you again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you in the next one.